In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with PowerShell Protect. PowerShell Protect is a anti-malware scan interface provider, or AMSI, uh, that allows you to create customized rules for scanning and auditing PowerShell scripts. Uh, if those rules match um, based on you know, your configuration, what they'll do is they'll actually allow you to audit or block those scripts. Um, it also comes with a bunch of built-in rules, so you, uh, you don't actually have to configure it to actually start um, enabling some of these rules. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the PowerShell Protect um, AMSI provider. And that's done using the install PowerShell Protect uh, command that's available in PowerShell Protect. Um, and you'll need to run this from an administrator command prompt. So once I do that, it's going to register that, um, that particular provider with Windows. And now it's going to start scanning PowerShell scripts. Um, what I need to do next is actually uh, install a PowerShell Protect license. And you can get a trial key from our website uh, as well as purchase a license. Um, and once we have that, what we can do here is we can set the configuration for PowerShell Protect. So you can use the new PSP configuration command let to set the license key and then call set PSP configuration to actually write that configuration file out to uh, the kind of the default storage location. Um, you can configure PowerShell Protect to store this configuration file in a, a couple different locations. Um, one being on the file system, you can also store it in the registry, which makes it easy for um, pushing out via group policy. Uh, now that we actually have uh, set this, I'm going to actually open a Windows PowerShell window here. And if we try to execute something like invoke expression, you're going to see that uh, this was blocked by default by uh, PowerShell Protect. So um, obviously, by by default in um, PowerShell, you can use invoke expression. But invoke expression is one of the commands we've deemed as dangerous. And um, you can see it's blocked by default. Uh, and this is kind of the experience your users will see if they try to attempt to execute something that is um, not allowed. So AMSI also runs inside um, PowerShell itself. Um, not just Windows PowerShell. So if you were to open like uh, PowerShell 7 here and then um, try to do the exact same thing, uh, you're going to have the same uh, error show up. And this is uh, the case for any um, PowerShell engine that's running on si inside Windows. So if someone is you know, kind of self-hosting PowerShell, such as something like uh, PowerShell Universal, uh, it's also going to have to uh, go through the AMSI provider and um, scripts that are not allowed will be blocked. Um, we can take the configuration a step further and kind of like customize it ourselves. So those are just kind of the default rules. We have a list of those default rules on our website uh, in the documentation. But let's go ahead and build our own custom rule. So first of all, what we want to do is you want to set up a condition. So in this case, I'm going to set um, a condition that checks the script. Uh, and we use the script property of the condition. It's checking the entire contents of the script. So uh, in this case, this condition is checking to see if the script contains the human resources um, corp uh, network share. So that'll create the condition. And then we want to set up two different um, actions. So these are what happen uh, if that condition is met. So the first action is to block. So if someone is trying to access this corporate share, we want to block it. Uh, and then the second action is we want to log it. So um, we're using the file action here to actually just write to a local file, and I'll kind of show what that looks like in a sec. Um, and then you can actually specify a, a format, uh, and this takes a bunch of different uh, parameters. Um, in this case, it's just outputting the script that's executed. Um, but you could also include things like the timestamp, the user, the domain this was run in, that kind of thing. Um, finally, we can chain all this together and uh, associate it with a rule. So uh, this particular rule. Um, you know, can have one or more conditions. It could also have one or more um, actions. And in this case, it has two actions. So if that condition is met, it's going to execute both of those actions. Finally, we want to uh, create the configuration. And you can see here, um, I'm just using new PSP configuration again. Uh, I'm associating those actions with the configuration. Um, you can, you know, define a lot of different actions and associate them to uh, multiple rules. So that's why you have to do it in the configuration as well. Uh, and then we're going to set the rule and the license. 
Now, uh, before I actually install my um, configuration, what I can do is I can call test PSP configuration to uh, take that configuration and then run it against uh, a script block or a script that I have on the desktop, that kind of thing. And I'm gonna actually call new PSP or new PS drive um, and try to create a new um, drive for that corp uh, human resources um, uh, network share. And now when you see with the test PSP configuration, um, I actually, re it returns admin block, which means that this configuration is gonna block that script from running. Um, if I want to see uh, the output of my audit log, you can see here that it actually output a bunch of information um, kind of about, oh, these are previous tests, but you can see in the bottom here that it output that uh, new PS drive corp human resources string that I actually um, executed. And we can just validate that. Um, let's actually remove this item. And uh, let's execute our test again. And you can see admin block is returned. And then if we get the content again, you see uh, just that particular script block that I was trying to uh, execute was returned. Uh, the next step is that I can install this particular configuration and now it's going to start blocking um, those types of scripts uh, in my PowerShell uh, windows. So if I open Windows PowerShell again and I try to do a new PS drive, uh, human resources, execute that, you're going to see that now this particular um, script has been blocked because we don't want people creating drives to the corp human resources share. So in this video, uh, we went through how to get started with PowerShell Protect. Uh, PowerShell Protect is available on the PowerShell Gallery, and you can get more information on, of PowerShell Protect uh, at docs.powershellprotect.com.